as the Philippines, together with the rest of the ASEAN nations, participate in the so-called globalizing world, there is a pressure to cope with the Western and industrialized countries' notion of progress and development. We are challenged to step into modernity. Yet, amid all this, much has to be reconsidered and analyzed with our very perspective and construction of what progress, development, and modernity is. In the Western world, progress and development has always been equated with modernity. Modernity itself is a Western construct that evolved through the West's long history of materialist and individualistic philosophy. Its apogee is seen in what we have come to call the first world countries. Synonymously, we call them industrialized or developed countries. And the general perception is that this is the direction that each country should take in how we differentiate a developed or industrialized country from a developing or newly industrializing country. If this is the case, why then must we as ASEAN nations preserve and develop our cultural heritage? What is the importance of cultural heritage in the modern global world? To answer these questions, it would be necessary then to lay down a few theoretical foundations. We need to take a glimpse of the very construct of Western progress and modernism that seems to be the dominant and assumed concept. We need to revisit our own indigenous construction of progress as well. We need to contextualize these to how they are articulated in our indigenous and local art. Finally, we need to construct our contextualized notion of progress, drawing from our rich cultural heritage. Likewise, we also need to map out a direction for our future that is grounded in our own realities, resources, and culture. The Western modernism is the direction that Western history has been following through more than 2,000 years. It dates back to the treatises of the Greek Plato and Aristotle. They laid the foundations of a newfound philosophy that point to the individual man as a measure of all things and the center of the universe. And so, for the centuries to come, the arts and technology of the West were geared towards shaping Earth for man's convenience and enjoyment of the world. Furthermore, in the 17th century, science and technology started to be developed towards a direction where man could take full control of nature and society to achieve specific economic and political results. And so, when it became possible for the individual man to take control of nature and human nature, the epoch of modernity began. The problem with this Western construct of modernity is that the concept of the individual man has come to mean only the white middle class man. And so with the white middle class male as the subject of progress and development of the world, the people outside these definitions become marginalized and disenfranchised. The tragedy of this is that the marginalized and disenfranchised only become means for the West's modernist project. And so in history, while the West became closer and closer to achieving modernism, progress, and development, the rest of the world suffered the pains of serving as only the means towards the white middle class man's dreams and construction of modernism. Up until the last few decades, much of the data and facts of written history of the Philippines were either essentializing interpretations of the past by Western colonizers or if not, by the Filipino pensionados whose education and perspectives were molded by their American education. It is only recently that Philippine history is being rewritten in an indigenous perspective. It is only now that our story is slowly being told by and for Filipinos.
As most other ASEAN countries, the Philippines is a country of people of varied ethno-linguistic groups. Prior to the coming of the colonizers, the indigenous Filipino enjoyed a high standard of living in context of the indigenous cultures of the time. We had our own writing system where, based on this, literacy is 100% among the women and 98% among the men. The indigenous architecture of our ancestors, which some groups still adopt today, make full use of the nature around them while keeping natural ecological balance of the environment that they live in. In Palawan, for example, a group of people uses indigenous large leaves that fall during hot climate to provide ventilation. When wet by the rain, these leaves spread out and serve as walls for their houses. More sophisticated still is one of the UNESCO Living World Heritage Sites, the largest rice terraces in the world which is located in Benguet. This stands as an evidence of a superior technology and culture of the Ifugaos and Galingas. These people have relatively kept their indigenous culture alive until today. Their indigenous textiles are still woven by hand in the traditional way. Their ritual dances and music remain to be practiced to call upon deities for requests and celebrations such as thanksgivings after successful harvest, births, and even deaths. Rituals are also performed to give instructions to the young about the group's ways of living and traditions. In the far south of the Philippines, in Mindanao, is where our Muslim brothers have kept their centuries-old traditions and culture. A culture of music, dance, and arts that are similar to our neighboring Islamic countries. Mindanao represents an aspect of the Filipino culture that we share with the rest of the Southeast Asian countries. The people of Mindanao have fought against the colonizers through almost four centuries of colonization and there they have preserved most of the pre-colonial culture. From these, our Muslim brothers still play the Kulintangan, a gong ensemble relative to the gamelan of Indonesia and Malaysia. The okir remains to decorate the houses, furniture, and musical instruments. With the ocean being an environment to the Mindanaoans, this decorative motif that resembles the waves is the same design motif that can be seen in our neighboring countries. Also inspired from the movements of the waves is the pangalai, a sophisticated dance form from Mindanao. The movements and grace required to dance the pangalai is another commonality that we share with other ASEAN cultures. More than three centuries of colonization from Spain has left permanent marks and changes in our indigenous cultures. It was when Roman Catholicism was introduced as a new religion. The indigenous faith was projected as pagan and inferior. Ignorant of their way of living, the Spaniards considered the Filipinos uncivilized and inferior. And so, we became slaves to these new colonial masters. And while our natural resources were abused, the strengths of our people were exploited. We created the legendary galleons of the Manila-Acapulco trade. We also built the churches of the new religion, some of which are now considered world heritage sites. Their music, dance, fashion, and aesthetics have been imposed on us as what is civilized and superior. And in these fields, we have also excelled. Yet these Hispanic influences in our culture are only superficial. If you look closely, the religion, the music, dance, and art of these colonial masters have evolved through the reinterpretations and contextualizations of the local craftsmen, artisans, and townspeople. The Miagao Church in Iloilo is a 300-year-old church declared a World Heritage Structure by the UNESCO. Although taking from European Baroque style, this is only on the surface. Its structural and decorative design has been contextualized in the realities of the Philippines. The structure of this Filipinized earthquake baroque church includes the buttresses as integral part of design to support it from the frequent earthquakes in the region. The facade of the church features St. Christopher in the local attire of farmers of the time. As rendered by local Filipino stone carvers, the saint holds on to a large coconut tree for support. Further reinterpretations of the Catholic saint story by Filipino artisans are seen on the bas-relief embellishments of papaya and guava trees on the church timpanum. 
even the music, drama, and dance initially brought in by the Spaniards were Filipinized by our ancestors. The Pasyon became an annual ritual all over the Christianized region of the Philippines. This ritual of singing a verse story based on the Passion of Christ was sung in the traditional singing technique and in the traditional melismatic and sliding style. The zarzuela, or musical theater, was localized by Filipino dramatists by having characters and issues of the plays directly concern the issues of the Filipinos. The fandango, jota, and valse have found a new context and reinterpretation in the bodies of the Filipino folk dancers.